Hi everyone and welcome to another edition of City Spotlight. I'm your host Pablo Pereira. Today we come to you from the Gelson Shopping Center. We're standing in front of the Calabasas Veterinary Center to talk about a very important issue here in Calabasas this summer. Of course we're talking about the heat where temperatures can easily climb into triple digits on any given day. And it's those type of temperatures that can be very dangerous or even deadly to your pets. Let's go inside and check it out. All right, we're here at the Calabasas Veterinary Center with uh, veterinarian Attila Molnar, and thanks for joining us this afternoon. We really appreciate it. Uh, summer here in Calabasas, no doubt one of the hottest places anywhere in Southern California. Talk to me about heat and animals. Yes, it, it, it gets pretty hot around here, like uh, in the hundreds, uh, triple digits sometimes, and what happens, uh, most of these dogs were not meant to be in this heat because they come from Europe originally and they're used with the temperate climate and it doesn't get more than, I would say, 85, 90 maybe. So people don't understand that if you expose these guys even, even for half an hour, an hour to an extreme heat, they can get in trouble, especially when it's that hot. Uh, when, when you say in trouble, what are we, what are we talking about? What happens, they, they, they overheat, they, they, they can't compensate uh, for, for extreme heat because they don't have the, the mechanism to compensate. So what is it about dogs and sweat glands that I read or something? They don't really sweat. They don't, really. Dogs don't sweat. Do, dogs will sweat through, pant, through panting through, through the tongues, but sometimes if it's too hot they can't keep up. And the biggest mistake that people do is they put them in cars and they park the car, they go inside the supermarket. And even if you roll down the windows a little bit, it still gets very hot in that car very, very fast because you got the, uh, the glass house effect and it gets very, very hot. And lots of dogs get in trouble in the cars. It takes a couple of minutes to go in, in full heat stroke and the temperature ra uh, raises over 105 and the dog is... Okay, I'm here with Deputy Knott from the Lost Hills Sheriff's Department. He's been so kind to join us here in Calabasas to talk about dogs and hot weather and heat and what someone can legally or not legally do. As I was telling you before, I was at the uh, Home Depot nearby, encountered a couple of dogs over the weekend, locked up in a car. Uh, I handled it by going in, they announced it on the PA system, the woman came out, got in the car and left. A lot of people on social media, since I posted this, said, you should have broken the windows, you should have called 911. What's, what's, the, what's the 411 on this? Well, don't do that. What you do is you call 911. If you see a dog, even if the windows are slightly cracked, the temperature inside the van or the truck could be uh, up in the hundreds. So definitely call 911. We'll respond. We'll make a decision on what we have to do next. We'll probably have fire roll. Um, we'll try to get the car open. We'll first look for the owner. It is against the law, though, to leave a dog in a hot car if something happens you to that dog. You can be criminally. Uh, charged with a, with a crime for that. Um, again, if you're a bystander and you take action before I get there, then I can't see it for myself and I can't articulate in the uh, report what I saw and charge that person. So it's best just to wait. It, barring exigent circumstances. If a child is obviously, you know, passing out, if the animal is uh, panting and passing out, then, um, then I would say you have to take action. Gotcha. All right, we've talked a little bit about the dangers of heat in your dogs, but what about dogs in cars and leaving your animals in cars? Believe it or not, it happens every year, and people do it here in the West San Fernando Valley where the temperatures in the summer really begin to soar. We wanted to do a little test, and as a meteorologist, of course, I carry my Kestrel 4000, which uh, measures all the various uh, outdoor elements there. Currently, we're sitting at about, oh, you can zoom in here and you can see we're at about 89 degrees or so, and uh, not quite as hot as it was over the weekend. But 
that really doesn't matter. What we're going to do is we're going to open up my car here and show you just how quickly the temperature can heat up in a car. And think about putting your dog in a car next time after you see the results of this quick little test. 89.2 degrees. And we're just going to leave it on the dashboard there and we'll come back. All right, check it out. We put this in the, the Prius just about a minute and a half, two minutes ago, and the temperature's already climbed about seven, eight degrees from about 88 degrees to 96. There it goes, 96.7, 0.8, 0.9, 97. Imagine your dog being left in a car in this heat. Now watch, we're not done just yet. So what I'd like to do is I have Chip and Ozzy here today, and I'd like you, if you would, take their vitals now. I mean, they've been outside for just a couple of minutes. Okay. Chip's already doing a little panting. Then I'd like to take them outside, maybe run them around just a little okay. bit, take their vitals, and have you tell me what's changed in their, in their body mechanics, if you would. Hi, sweetie. <laughs> Cute little dog. If you look at the color, nice and pink. Lift them up a little bit for me, please. Oh, okay. Okay, so this is, uh, this is Ozzy. Ozzy turns 10 this week, so older dogs, too, have issues. Yes, they do have issues, and they are, sometimes they have underlying cardiac issues, which you don't pick up, and they, and they get worse with the heat outside. So what do you tell people with older dogs? Uh, actually, Ozzy is a little bit too heavy. He's lose some weight. That, and that I know, this, yeah. is, this is causing a problem with the heat. It's one of the biggest major factors in this, in this one. Uh -huh. So next we had our summer intern, Emily, take Chip and Ozzy for a little run outside in the parking lot. All right, so we just gave, gave them both a real short workout. Want Excellent. To... Just hold on to the little Frenchie. Let's listen to the heart over here. <laughs> okay, number two. 40. Let me put it down away because I'm going to forget my numbers. 40. Okay, number two. Listen to the heart. Hold his mouth closed for a second for me, if you would, please. Same heart rate on this guy. The other guy went up quite a bit. 22. Panting. Okay, I'm just going to use temperature every time. All right, so give me your uh, so give me your assessment of the two dogs before and after. And we just took them for a very short run. Gotcha, we didn't gotcha, want to gotcha, attack. Gotcha. Uh, I need a calculator to calculate something. Give me, if you give me one second, okay. I need to calculate these things, and then I'll be back. Let's see, so it was 28 times 4, 112 to 160, and this guy, is, this guy stays the same, okay, 84. So um, the French Bulldog, the French Bulldog's uh, heart rate went up from, uh, from uh, uh, 112 to 160, and this is because it's a different dog than the Enderbookers, the, as normal breathing patterns, so he gets enough oxygen. When this guy goes outside and runs in a short, in a short distance, his heart rate went, went up from 112 to 160, very, very fast. He kept the same heart rate. Nothing has changed. Respiration, they're both panting, so because it's hot, so that you can't assess, but definitely there's some panting going on. But his heart rate went up considerably just in a sh short time, showing that all these brachiocephalic breeds, these bulldogs, uh, pugs, and all these short-faced dogs, are much higher risk than, than other dogs outside. Uh, his weight is a little of a problem. That, that makes him a little bit more susceptible, but because he can breathe normally and, and, and he's got normal nose, everything is, he can, he, can, he can dissipate the heat much easier than this little guy can. So as we say goodbye to you today, what would you tell people regarding heat and their animals? Uh, a, a very, very cautious with the heat. Uh, you can't exercise dogs in the heat unless you know they can, they can handle it, depending on the breed, how skinny they are. I would be very, very cautious with the heat because heat can kill animals and it's, it's, it's devastating. So they should not take chances unless they know the dogs. They, they should go to the vet and have the, the vet assess the dog and just like you do, they do a function to see how much, can, I can, how, how much they can handle to be outside. And according to that, 
uh, use that, that guideline to have your dogs outside. But I would be very careful with, with a lot of people. And again, we only ran them up and down the driveway twice, and we saw what happened to the, to the load, the, the chip. Yeah, exactly, exactly, because, because it is the breed. So you, you, every owner has to be aware of what breed of dog they have and how dangerous heat is for them. And have it assessed by the veterinarian, and then just be cautious. And no, no cars, no, no, no extreme heat, air conditioning, and then it should be fine. When we took our measurement outside about 10 minutes ago, it was 88 degrees. Now come on up here and take a look at how hot it has gotten inside this car. 118 degrees. That's a 30 degree jump in the temperature in just 10 minutes. Now imagine leaving your pet inside this oven. Now we talked to the deputy a little while ago for this story and we asked him about what to do if you encounter an animal in a hot car. He said specifically that you can't simply just break the window, but you've done that before. I, I broke three windows down and, uh, and nobody got pissed off, I mean, except one lady because I saved the dog's life. And uh, it is, I know it's vandalism to break the windows, but sometimes if you're sitting in a parking lot somewhere and they can't find the owner, and by the time you call 911 and the cops come, it might be, the dog might be dead. So uh, one dog was uh, at the window with his nose, sweating, I know he's dying, I, I don't have much time to wait to look at it, I just went and just, I just, I just broke the window with a, with a rock and saved the dog. So it was, it, it happened to be a cross, of um, English Bulldog cross. Uh, the lady was actually grateful for me, but uh, one lady got really pissed off uh, and you know, then I, I, I paid for the window, I mean, it's okay. I, I ended up paying for the window and it's fine because at least the dog didn't die, but uh, for that one lady, and then you have to decide what's more important for you to read it up for vandalism or saving a dog's life. And you need to use judgment because sometimes it's an animal's life that's, that hangs over the law. And the law is vandalism versus an animal's life. So you take a decision and being a veterinarian for me, it's not an issue. So I, I do it. going to do it for this edition of City Spotlight. We hope you've enjoyed the program. More importantly, we hope you've learned the dangers of keeping your pets outdoors during the heat. Remember our simple little test? It's not that hot outside today. Just about 88 degrees, a little humid. But in less than 10 minutes, the temperature inside my car climbed 30 degrees, making that deadly to your pets. For more information on this program, you can always log on to our website, cityofcalabasas.com. I'm Pablo Pereira. Thanks for joining us. Come on, guys.